All right, so um, <clears throat> last class we were talking about the, the two mountains and the Red Sea and Pharaoh bearing down on them and they're looking for answers just like we are. And just like we said in the last class, some of us use that scripture that Moses said uh, to help us when it's, it looks so impossible. Um, but the question is, where is the victory? Where is the victory? I mean, you know, is, is it uh, divine intervention? And it may look like that at a certain juncture, but is it that? Um, is it something that God needs to do outside of you? Okay, so these are important things because whether you're a leader or a pastor or a husband or a wife with children or, or anything like this, if you're going to have any influence in the kingdom of God, the, the approach on how you approach crises is huge because that's what you deal with all the time. <laughs> you know, that's what you deal with. Um, and, and if you just take the nominal approach, then all you're going to be doing is fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat. You're never going to win the war. You're always going to just be dealing with issues, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, so the circumstances in this situation are, are pretty dire, you know, and the question is, what is the assurance of victory in a situation where there looks like there can be no victory? And in this story, it gives us that. And the first, there's two things that I noted particularly was that God called his firstborn out of Egypt. And they're not out of Egypt yet. So what do you think's gonna happen? <laughs> God's going to bring his firstborn out of Egypt. See? But as long as we make it an issue of us and where I'm at spiritually, you know, because we, we, we look at ourselves and we go, well, the Lord's not going to or this or that. That's, that's the wrong place to look. We look to the cross. We look to the lamb. We look to the death that happened back in Egypt that has already taken place. The victory was already taken place. And... Pharaoh let him go. Now, yes, he's coming to stop that, but that doesn't reverse the death, the, the slain lamb, does it? It doesn't reverse that, and and that has to be a mindset. It cannot be just an event, and God help me and deliver me and move because why? because you're a compassionate God. There is nothing in the scriptures based on God being a compassionate God that is an eternal basis for deliverance. I, yes, I agree. I think that God constantly touches us with his compassion because we're not holding on to his lamb. But in this story, and I'll show you that in a minute, that's what he wants. That's what he wants. Praise God, I'm feeling better already. Does this feel a little more up? <laughs> so um, they had the firstborn lamb in them. They ate that lamb. They put it on the inside, and God said, that's what's coming out of Egypt. That's what's going to make it past the mountains, past the Red Sea, and out of the reach of Pharaoh is my firstborn son that I'm calling, not just out, I'm calling unto me. Amen. Okay, so here's a little clue. If you keep going after him for his firstborn son, you got no problems. I mean, it doesn't mean there's not going to be trials because there will be trials. But let me tell you, most of the trials in the wilderness were just flat out flesh where they didn't go with the Lord. Most of the trials in our lives are just flat out flesh because we didn't go with the Lord. You know, Lord, why do I have all these trials in my life? Well, it's because of you, you know, 
Okay, but when we, when we look to his view, when we look to his firstborn son and we say, this, you put your son in me and you're going to get your son out of this. Draw him forth, not just out of the crisis, but out of me so that through me you are receiving what this whole thing was about in the first place. We say, God saved me because he loved me. God so loved me. Well, Patty, tell him that's not the that's not the spe- <laughs> that's, that is not the true meaning of that. It, it has nothing to do with him so loving you. It is the manner in which he loved you that he laid down his life for you. And the, I'm telling you that that he laid that down so that we could eat that life in resurrection and he could get that firstborn son back. I mean, isn't that the, the life cycle of, of water, uh, it, all the vapor and, and water, and, and it goes through this whole cycle, but the same amount of water is always here in one form or another. Maybe you didn't know that. You know? And it's located in different places at different times, but it's the same amount, and it's the same amount of Jesus. We just have to stop living like Christians. We have to let Christ live within us. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, at this stage, they don't even know what it means that God called his firstborn out of Egypt. You know. Let me just ask you, how many of you feel like you really know what that means? Okay. Can we pursue this? <laughs> Can we get, stay on this journey? And go after that because there's nothing higher than the father getting his son. That's two eternal beings. And we are dedicating ourselves to them getting what they want, not to us getting a happy Christian life in this earth. So, um, and as long as they're that going to be that way, and they will be that way all the way through the wilderness, basically, as long as they're going to be that way, Every step in this life is going to be about them. How sad can that be? Every step in your life being about you. Oh, man. You know, something, something should ring in our hearts that says, no. But God is faithful to his son, his firstborn son. He is faithful. Be hid in the cleft of the rock, in the open wound. Be hid in him. Find what that means. Find the cross in that kind of way. And the Father will always be after his son in you. Hallelujah. All right, the other one, the the first one was that the, the, the victory was that he call, he's calling his firstborn out and in that case, out of Egypt. So he's coming out. And he's in them because they ate him. So he's coming out. So you're coming out. You're his body at that point. Amen? Yes. You're, his, you're the body of the, the firstborn. Okay? The second point was the lamb victory. The lamb had already won the victory, hadn't he? Okay. Has Jesus already won the victory at the cross? Yes, he has. And there's a stance that we can take on that that has nothing to do with how good we're doing or how spiritual we are. Because our spirituality, get ready, is not how spiritual we are. It's Christ. He is our spirituality. You know, someone said to me once, they said, well, you know, what is godliness? And I said, well, it's something you can't have without God. <laughs> and I went, oh, I've been trying to be godly by not doing this and doing this and da 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 da. This all boils down to the Lamb. It all boils down to God's firstborn Son that He is dedicated to, to draw out of you so that him in you comes unto the Father 
and in sacrifice, like the picture we gave last class of the father and the prodigal son, there ends up being a feast. I was, uh, <clears throat> I was reading today in John 15, and I was talking about the, the, you know, that they could know the love of the father the way I've known it, and then he says something about <clears throat> um, uh, that their joy might be that my joy might be in them and their joy might be full or fulfilled. And then he says, um, greater love hath no man than a man lay down his life for his friend. And I realize within those scriptures, Jesus is teaching us there's a feast in the sacrifice. Greater love hath no man. There's a feast in this sacrifice and I want you to feast with me and so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be fulfilled in this, like the, what happened with the prodigal son. And we, we read it and we go, well, yeah, make my joy fulfilled. Make me a happy Christian. I'm, I'm wondering if there is such a thing. <laughs> but anyway, that's it. That's not from the Lord necessarily. <laughs> um, so, so it was the lamb that won the won the vic That's what brought them out. And the Lord said, "I will do these ten plagues, and I shall bring them out." And the tenth one brought them out, and not one of the other ones did. There was no miracle that that brought them out, and there's no miracle going to bring them through here. And I'll explain that in just a minute, because in Mark. Chapter 16, he says, these signs will follow them that believe. Somebody could say to me, well, um, uh, God opened up the Red Sea and then he closed it on Pharaoh. So this, this was a miracle. That was a sign that followed believing in the Lamb. You have to understand that the Lamb is your victory, but signs can follow and manifest outwardly, but they're all based on what was settled a long time ago in him and you are accepted in him and you are not, not accepted otherwise you're not you know quit trying to be accepted or quit trying to feel good about yourself because Jesus accepts you no he doesn't he crucified you he doesn't accept you got to you got to get that so hard and fast in you that you're that you're okay with it not being about you. <laughs> you Patmos, you know, <laughs> crying. Pouty on Patmos, it's not, it's not about me. No, it's not about you. You are accepted in the beloved and, and one of these classes will get to that very verse and blow your mind with it in relationship to the firstborn, okay? I mean, there, there's a bunch coming the train coming, but we got to we got to start loading the thing with enough stuff that the Holy Spirit can go bam. So, all right. <clears throat> so Moses tells them in verse thirteen to stand still and see what God will do, and in verse fourteen he says the Lord will fight for you. All right. So we hold that scripture up. We hold that up. Um, so let me let me just read this part. But the Lord has already won the battle without fighting by means of a slaughtered lamb. Therefore, the Lord wants to know why they are crying and murmuring and standing still, looking to him for help and a victory when the lamb has already been slain. All right, does that spiritually make sense? Yes. Okay. Does it fully match up with the scriptures here? Yes, it does, and I'm going to show you. <laughs> Isn't that great? I'm going to show you that it actually does. Because I just said, it doesn't want you to stand still and doesn't want you to, you know, sound like I'm contradicting the word of God here. But just like two groups coming out, it's just as plain. If we ever saw it, do we see it? We haven't seen it. We're going to get it tonight. There's a million other scriptures just like this that we think we know. Okay, are we going to lower ourselves? Are we going to? Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. <clears throat> um, this is Exodus 14, verse 13 through 15. 
And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, This is Moses saying all that, now God speaking. Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Is that what it's saying? Yes. He's, he's saying, don't tell them to stand still and wait to see something. It's already been done. Hallelujah. Tell them to go forward. Well, how can we? There's a Red Sea. Go forward in the Lamb, not, you know, not in the circumstances. I mean, yes, put your feet out there and, and move. It's a walk. Walk out what's been already settled in the, in the cross. And basically, the Lord's saying, I'm not going to fight for you. He's reversing everything Moses said. And yet we put it on posters and banners. Yes, yes, this is, I believe. This saved me a million times. Oh, God, please, let's read the scriptures. Please, please. Let's break out of our whatever we got that we think we got something and say, I've got nothing. Open my eyes, dove. Come down upon me, as it were. You understand what I mean. But he's coming down on the firstborn. Amen. So quit thinking about you in the process. <clears throat> All right, so I'll just read this, which is basically what I just said. And How much time we got, Kelly? Okay, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so that verse 15, and the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? Why, Moses, why are you, why are these people crying unto me, whining and, and saying, you know, we, we, you messed us up sending us out here. Moses never said, I didn't send you out here. God did. And Moses is a novice. He doesn't know all the answers. I don't know all the answers. I don't. And you don't. We don't know all the answers. And everybody can go, oh, well, Moses said, he's a babe starting out here. He's barely into this. So far, everything he said before Pharaoh, God put it in his mouth and Aaron said it. You know? So the first time he speaks up, it's like, Stand, because he's, 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 this, all the power went through his rod right there, right? All the power's going through that rod, and so, but nothing's happening, but he's seeing power. And when a slain lamb is killed, that's when Pharaoh says, we're going to let him go. We're going to let him go. But Moses is still Mr. Rod guy, Mr. Power Rod, as it were instead of Mr. Lamb slain. And he says, stand still and see the salvation of God. God's going, you haven't seen it yet? You're supposed to see it back there. Didn't your, your house, Moses, didn't you and your folks kill that lamb yourself too, yours? The Lord will fight for you. The lamb didn't fight. The lamb didn't fight. God's stronger than the devil. Well, he also got tempted of the devil. And, you know, just a little revelation here. The devil's still around. No, I mean, if he's really everything that we think he is, why is the devil still around? Because he's a lamb, and he's working his plan according to the lamb purpose, not according to the victory purpose. What we call victory. What we call victory. So, as I was reading this and I saw it for the first time, you just go, I just don't want to claim I have anything. I just want to stay blind and let him open me to see it, but I'm still blind. You understand? I see it. It's like he gave the blind man ability to see 
the way I put it once was like a, like a video camera showing the, the film on the back of your eyelids, but you're blind. You can see it there, but you're still blind. You see it in your spirit. You see it. You, you can identify. I mean, when he said, the Lord will fight for you, I went, wait a minute. The lamb died for you, and that's how he won. He didn't fight. So when I see fight for you, I have to check it out. I have to double check things out. I have to go, where's the lamb? You know, where's the lamb? Isn't that what Isaac asked? Father, I see all the utensils for sacrifice, but where's the lamb? And he goes, don't worry. God has one. God has one. It's not you, but we had to show, and I, I'll just, well, I'm not going to, I'm not let it give away too much for when we get there, because it's just a great story of the prodigal son and of this whole firstborn thing that's going on. <clears throat> go forward. God says, go forward. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Can you get it? Walk in the truth of the Lamb. Don't get it, store it up, and then spew it to impress people. Amen? Could we, could we just change from now on and say, I don't want that? Even if we didn't change from doing it, at least make a stand to say, I don't want to do that anymore. I just would like, I would rather have a week of walking in it than two years of talking in it. Hallelujah. And that means glory to God. Glory to God. All right, so I'm going to quit here. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we are blind, so blind to the scriptures. We have jumped on the bandwagon of what everybody says that they say. And we have never really taken the time to go through and read. And while we're reading, Holy Spirit Dove just land on Jesus in there. Land on Jesus and let me see him here. Father, there is so much blessing and reality that you want to pour out upon us. But we, Lord, we want to make a stand. We want to at least say it. If we never do it, Lord, at least we, we prayed it once. But we want to do it. <clears throat> that we would rather have two weeks of really being able to walk in it than two years of talking about it. And in our hearts, in the, in the core of our hearts, in the heart of hearts, we would want to give you the firstborn son, not in word, but in how we react and how he comes forth and what we say and what we don't say and what we don't say. For the lamb opened not his mouth at just the right times. Father, we seek so much beyond what we ever knew and thought. We, if we reach into darkness, we seek you there. We don't know you like we need to. And in that sense, you are a stranger. You are in darkness to us. But we reach into that darkness and say, Holy Spirit, guide my hands and my steps and my heart and my prayers that they may be true and they may be like an arrow that is true shot from my heart to find the mark, which is the Lamb of God, the firstborn of God. For we ask in Jesus' name.